blockchain, um, the new coins, mm -hmm. the ICOs, then it's basically what, uh, where you need to go. Well, and I'm asking you, uh, I'm, I'm particularly talking to you now about, uh, because you're going to uh, Silicon Valley and you're presenting to VCs that ICOs, initial crypto uh, currency um, uh, introduction, that that is really a nice way to, uh, to raise money. Tell, tell me how an ICO works. Um, well, actually, they're originally called initial coin offerings, uh, ICOs, sort of like IPOs. And, and in fact, it's kind of similar in some ways, but it's very different in others. Now, what in effect has happened, essentially, is that um, we've discovered a way to raise money in the crypto community that is very interesting and very different to the typical uh, investment models. So, you know, typically for a institutional investor or a venture capitalist, they are not interested in investing in foundations with open source software that have, uh, you know, oftentimes quite egalitarian ethos involved. And it's, it's less about, you know, everyone getting rich necessarily, even though we, some people are getting rich on the game. And, and uh, what's interesting about initial coin offerings is, is, is any startup that's thinking about doing a startup should be thinking, especially in the blockchain space, should be thinking about an ICO yeah. uh, because we raise money uh, without giving out equity. Now, uh, it's a little bit complicated to explain in such a short time, but... No, but I mean, let's, let's take it by the step because people have heard about ICOs, but they have no idea what it is. Okay, so first, most of the ICOs are based on the blockchain Ethereum, right? It's a smart contract based on uh, <laughs> Ethereum and you and you, uh, you you create a new project like uh, give me a give me a, like decent okay, like decent yeah. or humanic and you have an idea what you want to fund and you give it a name and you give it a coin name and then you write a smart contract and it runs on ethereum and who are these people who are doing it and what kind of purposes are uh, have you seen are being supported by a pro by a project like that well, I just, I'm just coming off the tail end of a project called Humanic, which is the first humanitarian project, actually, in the crypto community ICO arena. And we're, we've raised now $4.2 I think, I believe, within the past, uh, what, 10 days mm -hmm. um, in Ether and Bitcoin investment. Uh, what we did is we issue a, uh, a capped limit of coins. So we decide that we want to we create a new project and we're going to create our own currency and we're going to put that cryptocurrency on the crypto exchanges along with Bitcoin and Ethereum and everything else. Yeah. Now, um, so the project, let me, let me give you something. The, like, what's the name of the coin? In this HMQ. Case? HMQ. And, what yeah, is, so, and the money which you raise with this whole project, you manage, what, what kind of project is it? Okay. Well, the, the project is we want to, you know, we believe that block, a combination of blockchain, biometric identity and mobile technology can bring some to help bring some two billion people who in the world who don't have access to financial uh instruments so they have no bank accounts mm -hmm. a lot of these people don't have any identification yeah and the, unbanking, people, the unbanking is really interesting yeah so yeah it's financial inclusion so uh the blockchain is actually a really great infrastructure to help uh build these kinds of systems on because of the you know the secure aspects and everything else that that go along with uh, the the distributed ledger technology yeah um we, we do have some centralized features on the on the tech stack like with biometric identity we're going to centralize that for a while for various reasons um but let me get it to put it into the to the simplest terms we decide we want to raise money uh we wanted to raise 10 million but it looks like we'll do five to raise uh, money to um, actually do three pilots or two or three pilots in India and Africa to introduce mobile phone technology, mobile phones into communities, select communities um, that have the capability to do biometrics and have our application on them. Now, the person who gets this phone has a very interesting e user interface that's very easy, even for people that can't read. Uh, we will give them, we will reward them with HMQ, our currency. Uh, once they scan their face and they put their fingerprint and they do the voice recognition, so we have a biometric identity for them. Then we will offer them um, other uh, ways to um, earn HMQ. For instance, like Amazon Turk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a service that's perfect actually through mobile devices. We can provide people with very simple jobs on their mobile devices where they can we can pay them in HMQ. Yeah. Now this HMQ will set up uh, some some stations in the area in the beginning where we will bring in satellite technology also for uh, to make sure that they have the bandwidth to operate properly. 
Uh, and that's becoming a very, uh, very affordable uh, it, within the next 12 to 18 months in Africa in particular. Uh, via projects from Facebook and Google, but we also have some other plans with a company called um, Kaimeta, Bill Gates back. But anyway, so the bandwidth is there. They, they, they can use their phones. They can scan in their identities. They can, okay. we can so Humanic, Humanic itself is a in very interesting project, and you're going to base, make unbanking and try to, to solve that problem in a particular way. So the coins which are sold is actually going to that project, and you have a team. Which no, no, no. Let me let me explain it better. The coin is the basis currency. So, if I'm in if I'm in Europe and I decide, I don't know if you know what Kiva is, right? You know what Kiva.org is probably. Well, we, we'll have a form of. Uh, I think one of the biggest features we'll have is the ability to send money to people. So, I have someone in Africa that I want to have. Uh, I want to help out with a loan or a donation or a yeah. you know a, a, a interest free loan. I can actually help them uh, with a group with a group of people paying twenty five or thirty euro each to help them get another cow or a pig or whatever they need to, yeah. or Kiva, more Kiva stuff in the really, shop. Kiva has a great example. I have about twenty projects there which I'm currently uh, supporting, and it's really interesting to see. So, the, this this Humanic will do also uh, some of the same function. Right. So if I have if I want to help these people out, I have to buy the currency to send to them. Yeah. So that's the utility value of the currency, which is very important because it's not just about you know, getting a discount on, you know, what I didn't explain further, but what happens in the ICO process is we decide, okay, we're going to create 100 million of these coins. They're capped. Yeah. Then we're going to uh, do what's called a pre-ICO where we raise money amongst family and friends and a small group of investors or maybe public to raise approximately 200 to 3,000 for the ICO campaign. It costs a lot to do. Yeah. And then we do the ICO campaign. We offer 50% off the uh, discount in the first week, usually you know forty, and we stagger it till the end of the ICO. So people that buy like a thousand euro worth of coins actually get fifteen hundred instead yeah. if they buy in at the highest rate. Yeah. When it hits the crypto exchanges, they're already up five hundred at the beginning. We okay. don't know what happens after that because people buy and sell. Okay. Usually they go up. Sometimes they go down. They particularly go down if people aren't using them. Yeah. So you know, for instance, there's uh, a coin in the Netherlands called the Gilden that you know for some reason it spiked crazily like three weeks ago, and it was based on some news or something that that came out or Singular DTV came out with a video and their coin increased three times in value. So it's about right now it's about the news cycle more or less yeah. uh, than anything that's determining the pricing of these cryptocurrencies. Yeah. But once so, you start using it, like Humanic, and it basically gets traction, the, the, the coin will start being used, and then also that will help being uh, uh, upping up the value. Okay, I, wa I want to keep it like that because I, I don't want to get into more, but it's really interesting. You create a coin for a particular purpose. You have a certain way to introduce it into the market. If I want to see this more, because I've been talking to you for half an hour before, and people have now have some kind of an in impression, where can you find more information about this whole ICO uh, offering, this initial cur cur uh, crypto offering process? Um, I would suggest you go to uh, BitcoinTalk.org, which is where all the ICOs are announced. It's in a web forum, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. But there's a section called an announcements for, for uh, altcoins. But That's Richard, where you can see that, is for, that is if you're really good and you really want to know now, what's going if you on. If you want to have an ICO for dummies. <laughs> If you don't want to scramble through the mess, actually, there's nothing really written deeply about it. But I would say you go to Smith & Crown, uh, Google it. They're a company that rates ICOs and also ICO rating, and it has a bit of a description there. Search on Google. Uh, I've written a couple of articles. I did one recently for Harvard Business Review on ICOs and also for VentureBeat. Okay. They kind of explain how these systems work. Um, I hope I hope that you will be there at the. Uh, it depends a little bit on the circumstances, but uh, on the June the twenty second, we have this uh, Bitcoin Innovation Conference and ICOs is a really interesting.